Hello ladies and gents, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for your continued support. And I hope you learned something today. Have you ever been looking online for that one model you always wanted? And websites like Thingiverse or Printables just left you disappointed? Well, I have great news for you. I will show you two free ways to make your model and a special bonus at the end. So stay tuned. And let's have some fun making 3D art. Okay, I will go over two ways from easy to moderate skill level. I know this all sounds intimidating, but trust me, I started from scratch also. And I followed, and I still follow, many tutorials from very prominent creators here on YouTube to figure out how to approach my 3D models. The one thing I can guarantee is if you decide to make your own models, it will be intimidating at first, but once you get the hang of it, you will have fun in the process no matter how bad or good it comes out. Look, the only way to get better is to practice, and you cannot practice unless you try. The first tool I have for you is Tinkercad. Tinkercad is 100% free. All you need is to create an account, and you're in. Like I said, there are hundreds of tutorials to get you started, but Tinkercad is so easy, you will pick it up in no time. Trust me, I believe in you. The first thing that greets you when you open Tinkercad is the work plane grid and a few shapes on the right. If you click on these shapes, you can grab them and drag them to the work plane. From here, you can click on the white squares around the object to drag and resize your object. If you drag another object on top of the object already on the work plane, you can use the new object to make a hole or add to the existing object. I recommend you play around and click on every button as you know, you can't break anything here. You can always undo or even start over. Focus on what you're trying to make. An eye is round, so let's use a sphere. An arm or a leg are cylindrical, so let's add a cylinder. Look at Gengar. He has a round body, so I add a sphere. I add two spheres for his eyes. I make the sphere slightly bigger to cut holes on his head for the eye sockets and I place two spheres in the hole for his eyes. I add cylinders for his arms and legs. I duplicate and mirror them. And then I use cones to use as his fingers. I use cones for the spikes and the tail, and I have cylinder for his mouth. This model is not very high poly or detailed, but it's a great start. After printing, I go through the painting process. Prime white with the airbrush. I then mask his eyes and mouth give the rest of his body a base coat of purple and let it sit and dry for a bit. I then grab my wet palette and my brushes and paint his eyes and mouth, careful to give him a great smile. The second tool I want to show you is one of my older friends. This tool has been around for a very long time, but I have been using it since around 2011. The tool I am referring to is Blender. This tool brings me so much joy when I open it because of all the possibilities and potential that it brings. I can literally create anything. I have been using it since version 2.5, but they are up to version 4.0, which is better than ever. Did I mention that Blender was free or open source, which in layman's terms means free, right? The first thing that greets you when you open the program is the grid, the default cube, and the tools on the right. I can go over the UI and the tools, but if I did, this video will be four hours long, and there are much better creators on YouTube that cover this topic better than me. If you learn this program, you can create anything your heart desires, and it will warm your heart every time you open it, the way it does mine. The trick with Blender is to not be intimidated with its very complicated looking UI. Focus on the grid and play around with the object translation tools on the left, and just click on all the tabs. After a few minutes of familiarizing yourself with the UI, you will stop feeling intimidated and you will start to feel more comfortable with the program. One quick tip for me to you is to click Shift A on your keyboard, which brings up a context menu. Familiarize yourself with this menu as it lets you add any object you want. Kind of like Tinkercad has on the right hand side, but here everything is a bit more hidden or organized. We will focus on the mesh menu here. This has all the objects you need to create any shape or the foundation to create anything. 
same as Tinkercad. Just break down the model into smaller objects. Head equals sphere. Eyes are also spheres. Legs and arms are stretched out spheres. Fingers, toes, and all his spikes are cones. You can get a little more advanced and click on the tab key, which lets you edit the selected object, manipulating its faces, vertices, and edges to get more precise shapes. If this all sounds like a foreign language, don't worry, you will eventually get it. I recommend the Blender Donut series by Blender Guru if you want to get real advanced in Blender. I will put a link in the description for the playlist if you're interested. Once you're done modeling and printing, it's time to paint. Similar as we did before with the Tinkercad model is a matter of priming white, masking the eyes and mouth, base coat of purple with my airbrush, and once it is dry, just using the brushes and my paints to give him the final touches on his great veneers. Okay, on to the bonus tool. I did not lump it with the first two because this one is a bit more expensive. And the cost of entry is a bit greater to get the most out of it. Nomad Sculpt is a sculpting tool for iOS and Android. It is available free for Android, but it costs $15 on iOS. For me, the best way to use it is to use a tablet and a pen, which depending on what you go for, can cost $300 plus. I personally use my iPad Air and an Apple Pencil, which makes my experience go butter smooth. This program is well worth it in my opinion, as you can sculpt on the go and create some awesome models. Blender can do most of the things found in Nomad, but Nomad can be used on the go and I feel for beginners the UI is less intimidating. The first thing that greets you when you open the app is the work area in the middle, a sphere, and the tools on the right. I recommend you start by playing with the default sphere and try to tap on the tools to see what they do. Once you get comfortable with the program, you can use the button on the top to the right of the button that looks like a folder. This button shows you the objects in your scene and here you can click the plus button to add additional objects as well as mirror and other organizational nodes. Press the add button and here you can pick which object to add to the scene and from here is very similar to Blender or Tinkercad. Break down your model into small chunks, head, eyes, arms, legs, fingers, mouth, teeth, toes, spikes, and tail. Remember, all these smaller objects can be represented by basic objects, so experiment and trust me, you will eventually get the hang of it. I recommend Dave Reed on YouTube if you're interested in getting better at Nomad. And as always, I will leave a link to Dave's channel in the description below. Once you're done, just export an STL and bring it into your favorite slicer. Remove your supports and you're ready to paint. With these simple models, you can practice all the painting techniques I have taught you before. Prime white or black, base coat, paint the eyes and then his mouth and his teeth. And here are all the models for your review. Please leave me a comment below and let me know which one is your favorite. Happy 3D printing. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you're a continued subscriber, thank you for your continued support. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. Please take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Peace.